Welcome to Level Up with Winnie Sun. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. Happy Thursday to you. It's wonderful to see you. And if you're joining us on the replay, a quick hello. Thank you so much also for tuning in. And do me a favor and include the word replay in your comments. So I'll make sure to catch your view. Well, welcome to the show. Today is a very special one. And actually, it's been a great day on the financial markets as well. So let's start there. This is how the Dow closed. The Dow closed up 332 points today. The Nasdaq closed up 167 points. And the S&P 500 was also up 41 points. The Dow and the Nasdaq jumped today as corporate earnings and solid economic data is upon us. S&P jumps 1% to a record high with four positive days in a row. We'll take that, right? In fact, first-time unemployment insurance claims came in at 50000 uh, Americans less than what analysts expected. That's a number we like being under for. We, we definitely don't want to see more Americans having to file unemployment. So pair that with more stimulus talk, getting closer to another round of stimulus checks, and investors are staying quite optimistic as we head into, you, you guessed it, the 2020 tax season. So hopefully, you know, you get your record straight and you're about to file very, very soon. But if not, you've got till April 15th again. But today we're talking about a very special topic, something that's very near and dear to my heart, and that is we're going to talk about employee resource groups, a.k.a. ERGs. Now, you've heard me talk about these before, but, you know, you may not have heard of these in the past. And in fact, I just learned about these organizations about three to five years ago. These groups led by employees first actually began in the 1960s due to racial tension during that time. This was Already a bad time with decades of racial, economic, and certainly political challenges with inner city poverty driving race riots in minority areas in cities all across the country here in the United States. And during that time, John Smith, who was a taxi cab driver, actually he was beaten and rumored to be killed by local police. And this led to the 1967 New Work riots here in America. So Joseph Wilson who was the CEO of Xerox Corporation, remember the copy machines? He started the first ERG after 2,000 plus, um, you know, violent race riots occur. Well, this it was a, it was plus Americans, I should say. He started the first ERG after 2,000 plus Americans came out and decided that this enough was enough, that they needed to come and protest and create a rally. And well, in 1964 in Rochester, New York, police actually initiate the use of violent canines to combat an otherwise what started as a very peaceful and mostly local rally. So many of you are listening to this and thinking, wow, this story sounds very familiar to what we experienced in 2020. And if you feel that way, well, let me just tell you, you're not alone in feeling this now more than five decades later. So I feel like this is a great conversation for us to have today. I'm very excited and honored to welcome my two guests today. So let's bring on Paula. Paula is, um, many of you, you're seeing her. I'm getting to meet her uh, via like virtual for the first time. We actually have a great <laughs> conversation. Paula, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Winnie, for having me here today. Well, thank you so much. I think this is a great discussion and it's an important discussion that we're going to have. But real quick, for those who don't know you, Paula, Paula is a senior publicist of the iconic and trusted People brand. That's right, my friends, People Magazine. You know People. She generates widespread and impactful coverage for these leading entertainment brands, print and digital content, as well as their event franchises. So she's a she's a very busy leader. Uh, Paula Paula loves working with number the number one source for entertainment news, which reaches, believe it or not, one in three American women and 100 million consumers nationwide. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. I think probably worldwide. Yeah. At People's parent company, Merit Corporation, Paula also serves as chair of Black Print, which you're going to want to learn about, the Black Employee Business Group. Now, let's also welcome Terrence. My friend Terrence here is the, hello, Terrence, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I feel like I already know you because, <laughs> <laughs> so well, we had such a fun conversation, but I, I'm really, I'm really glad that you're able to make and come to our show today. Thank you for having me. 
Well, if you don't mind, Terrence, I'd like to introduce you also, just like Paula. Uh, Terrence is the executive director of events and brand partnerships for Hearst Fashion Titles, L, Harper's Bazaar, Marie Claire, as well as co-partner of the ERG Allied. Prior to Hertz, Terrence was an independent consultant whose clients included, uh, I believe that's Harvest Worldwide, if I'm, if I'm wrong, I apologize, yeah. uh, Town and Country, artsy.net and has worked with mega brands such as Tory Burch, Vanity Fair, TSC Cashmere, Ralph Lauren. Uh, you know, this is like, this is sort of my closet um, dream <laughs> come true. I'm reading these names. I don't own all these things, but I'm, I really want to. And, and it was the on-air personality for the learning channels, Date Patrol. We're, we're, you know, one of these days we need to talk about that too, Terrence. That, <laughs> that's so another cool. segment. <laughs> that's another segment. That's right. All right, my friends. Well, you know what that means. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us. I see you all from different channels. Um, let me ask you this. You know, I think we should actually start with this. A quote. I'm, I want to see if the two of you know this. You know, there was a quote that came out that was, customers will never love a company until the employees love it first. And I'm wondering, Paula, Terrence, do you know who said this? Was it Gary Vaynerchuk, Tony Shea, Warren Buffett, Simon, Sarah, Randy? Who do you think said this? Hmm. Paula, I, you want to start? I'm going to guess Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. All right. You probably <laughs> thought that also because, you know, financial geek here with the two cool exactly. people here. <laughs> You're channel, channeling Winnie here. All right, Terrence. Let, let me have it. What do you think? I, I too was going to say Warren Buffett. That sounds a very Warren thing to say. <laughs> Not that we're friends or anything, but. <laughs> you sure? I feel like you hang out. <laughs> okay. Well, well, I see Robin joining us for Periscope and she's, she's guessing Tony Shea. And then many of you know, Tony Shea was a uh, past CEO of Zappos. Um, so actually you are all well, let's see. Let's see. We still got more answers coming in, but let me just tell you, actually, the answer is Simon Sinek. It was his quote. Now you're not, you're not surprised, right? <laughs> All right. Well, you know what that means? That means you're going to have to answer the rest of my questions today. On <laughs> Happy to do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, you know, Paula, I want to start with you on this. And that is, you know, uh, talk to me a little about your career path, uh, about how you ended up where you are today, uh, maybe a little bit, because I think a lot of people watching are like, wow, she has like a dream job. I would love to be in her her chair. And I'm sure <laughs> you've heard that before. Um, I have. I mean, so how did you get to where you are? Right. So in college, I was actually pre-med. Um, and then I got a job at a hospital and realized that was not the route I wanted to take. And I had always thought I wanted to be a doctor. And I remember calling my cheer coach crying, like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. She was like, have you ever heard of the show Scandal? And so I started watching Scandal. I saw Olivia Pope in all of her glory. And I was like, that's exactly what I want to do. I switched to the journalism school. I got a dual degree in political science. I thought I was going to move to DC. 2016 happened. And then I was like, I'm just going to move to New York and live this fabulous life and work for a magazine. And so I started at People and I've been here ever since. And I will say it has been the dream job. So you do live in New York and live a fabulous life and a fabulous <laughs> job. So, you know, many of us right now are again drooling and quite jealous. We're quite jealous. <laughs> but you know what? Terrence might top you because and Terrence, I, I gotta we gotta we gotta talk. You know, it's it's so interesting. I gotta say, Rebecca, who was book my booking producer, coincident coincidentally put the two of you on the same show together. It's actually really fun. For those of you who are watching, you're like was this planned not planned by me, but someone on my team planned it so that we have two of the most iconic publication <laughs> houses here that honestly I still read today and I started reading when I was little. Um, Terrence, let's talk about your fabulous life and, and your career path. Sure. Well, I mean, not only do we work for iconic uh, media brands, but we also have the same trajectory in terms of I too was pre-med. Uh, the only difference between Paula and myself, though, was I volunteered in a hospital. My sister's a nurse uh, prior to college and went into college thinking this is going to be it. And then yada, 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 going to a liberal arts college. I was like, oh, I can major in bio. I don't have to major in biology. I can major in anything and still uh, do the requirements. And by sophomore year, I was like, I'm not doing this. Uh, and I actually started out knowing then that I wanted to do something more creative. So I went into the advertising and PR field. Uh, so I started at a boutique advertising and PR agency. 
and then went to the brand side, uh, Ralph Lauren, say Cashmere, uh, and then media at Vanity Fair, uh, at Condé Nast, um, and then uh, Tory Burch to launch her sport uh, line, Tory Sport, uh, consulted for a few, and Elle was actually one of my clients. Um, and then uh, as I was consulting with them, an opportunity came about uh, that I couldn't refuse. And so uh, that's how I ended up at Hearst uh, and working on uh, both Elle as well as Harper's Bazaar and Mary Claire on all things uh, events and brand partnerships. Wow. So, you know, healthcare professionals all across the country right now are like, I could have been there. <laughs> <laughs> we need them though. We need them. Yeah. We need them. But wow, how incredible. So you both sort of had uh, you know, medical or or science on the radar and you both realized that you wanted to do something more creative. And wow, what a gift. Wow, what a gift to to be here with the two of you. Um, you know, Terrence, I'm I'm curious, um, you know, given all your responsibilities, obviously you've done a lot and you continue to do a lot. And I know you're a leader not uh, in your space and um, your fabulous self, as well as, you know, being a leader within other employees uh, at different companies. You know, oftentimes we work at companies where our job already takes up 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And we're like, I just want to do my job and go home and like get some sleep. But yeah. how, in your case, you know, you've proven yourself. You're already you've risen to a, a, such a high level. Um, why do you feel like there was a need for you to be involved, um, you know, within your organization and, and part of your employee resource group? Sure. Um, I didn't know I needed to be involved, to be honest. Um, uh, our organizations, our ERGs at Hearst, really started in 2019 and um i actually went to an open house and at the time to be honest i thought it felt a little college to me to like there was the lgbtq corner um the latinx etc um and uh but i did go and i just thought wow it's amazing that this organization meaning hearse uh has an opportunity for those who want to align uh and get support from these groups uh that they exist um, one of the uh, founders or the founder rather of the organization I'm the co-lead of called Ally um, actually approached me uh, as HR had mentioned that I might be a good candidate uh, having somewhat of a managerial position uh, within Hearst, uh, which to be honest, uh, as a queer black man, uh, there aren't that many, um, especially when I'm uh, in terms of people of color at the level that I'm at. Um, so uh, we spoke and I just thought it was an interesting proposition in terms of I've always feel like when I'm in the room or when I'm interviewing, uh, I don't see many BIPOCs uh, interviewing or vying for media jobs. And I'm always curious why. So, you know, selfishly, I wanted to be a part of an organization uh, that, you know, was there to support and educate both internally uh, but as well as externally, you know, why aren't we uh, securing the type of talent that I know is out there? Um, and then obviously what happened last year, you know, in terms of not only with the pandemic, uh, but with George Floyd death and uh, numerous other uh, incidences that happened in America, um, our organization really uh, became quite uh, the uh, low place to be, whether it was on our Slack channels, which is our internal, uh, messaging board or our meetings in terms of uh, just getting people together to actually talk about race. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing uh, across the board, whether it's media or fashion, any company, especially in America, you know, we just don't like to, to say uh, or talk about race. You know, I always say, you know, I'm not going to whisper I'm black. Like it's obvious I'm black and there's no reason why I can't just say it out loud. So. So, so Terrence Allied, tell me the mm -hmm. the group. Um, what is the demographic of Allied? So we can be very clear. Sure, sure. So Allied is it is in our ERG, and when we say we have memberships, you know, realistically, everyone uh, at Hearst uh, Magazine is open to join. Um, so in that case, it's not a, a review process or anything like that. I would say the majority is white because just by nature. Uh, our company, the majority uh, by fact is uh, predominantly white. Uh, and it's really there to seek, uh, you know, to build empathy and understanding through candid conversations and education about race, uh, inspire allyship first and foremost, you know, advocacy and, and action. 
Uh, you know, our mission really is to support the people of color uh, and and make sure that there's equal and fair representation, inclusion, and an opportunity at our company. Now, of course, you know, we can speak about things and how we can improve within our company on the micro level. But again, especially over the past few months, you know, it, we can't be siloed. There's so much on the macro level that has affected what we do on a day to day, especially as content creators. Um, so it really has uh, penetrated through uh, not only all levels in terms of, you know, from coordinator or assistant to, you know, VP and management, um, but also on both sides of the business, which is both editorial, those who create content, as well as the business side, which is mainly, you know, sales and such. So uh, it's, it's really been interesting to see from 2019 when I started as a co-lead to where we're at now, there's, there's definitely more of an urgency and I feel like um more of an importance for us to be there again just as an outlet uh for people to really speak their truths and have honest conversations because as we all know allyship isn't something you can just be uh you have to you know live it uh and it's a journey and everyone including myself uh is on that journey of, of, of true allyship so ally ally sounds like a very um uh, a basic an inclusive group, uh, an employee group of people of all backgrounds. And you said, cause, yeah. cause it's not, it doesn't sound that specific. I know this Correct. is really interesting. And, and Vicky, thank you so much for joining. I agree. She's joining us on Facebook. It is very interesting. Paula, I want to, uh, I want to have you jump in on this. Cause I, I think this is really important to talk about. Uh, first off, the question of course is, you know, what motivated you to take the lead within your organization on this, but also talk to us and share, if you don't mind your, not just ERG, I know you call it the business resource, but tell us about your group. Yeah, so I took the lead of what was BEAT, which was the Black Employees at Time Inc. Um, formerly, um, we merged with Meredith and I rebranded to Black Print just to be more inclusive of both communities, but we do primarily serve um, our Black employees at Meredith Corporation. Um, I think that for us, the reason that I was so, you know, on board with taking the lead for this, even though, you know, I was still kind of early in my career. I just, I saw, you know, with the sale of Essence, um, almost a lot of our diversity just leave the building. And it was very disheartening for me to feel like those faces weren't being reflected in my colleagues. And I took the helm because I was so determined, you know, to make sure that people knew who Meredith Corporation was so that we could continue to recruit diverse candidates. So initially that was my first intention. I just wanna recruit black people to this company. But as we continued to grow and as we continued to put on these great events, it became really an outlet for me to continue to have those conversations where we um, amplify the contributions of black people in the media industry. So that's both internally and what we're doing within our you know, brands, across our pages, but also externally and what's happening in black Hollywood, what's happening you know, in black history and black science and black culture and black art and just having those conversations. And I think that with every conversation we have and every event that I host, I really want um, representation in the media to be the underlying point of everything that we do. So whether we're talking to, you know, John Legend about his upcoming projects or Janelle Monet or Stacey Abrams, everything that we talk about always has to do with the importance of representation in the media. And I think it's so important because as journalists, we have the power to shape the world. And so, you know, that work really starts from within and from, you know, anti-racism training and all the program that we're doing and the exposure to Black people so that it's becoming more normal in our corporate culture to engage with people who don't look like you. I love that. Paula, love that. I love that Terrence and you are, are doing this. And, and I applaud you. I think those of you who are watching, I see Lana joining us from LinkedIn. I mean, this is very inspiring and it, and it gives us a lot of hope. One thing that, Paula, I'm going to actually continue with you on this is I like to hear a little bit about this. We talked a little bit about this before we jumped on, and that was, you know, calling it, we should call it what it is. This just should be called a business resource group because doing what's right for your employee base is good for your business. And you had exactly. mentioned that a little bit it's like you know both you and terrence um are in charge of very large events at these mm -hmm. mega mega media companies right and so that responsibility of making sure that that's representation not only in the employee new hires employee base but also in the events that you plan that are also out outward right can you explain and i know you're jumping a little bit but i'd love for you to kind of 
tackle that a little bit. Why is this good for business? It's so important to me that employee resource get, groups get the recognition that they deserve. I think I've been fighting for them to be referenced as business resource groups just because they do help with the bottom line. And I think that for so long, it was thought of as like a college club, kind of like, oh, you plan events and have screenings and everyone gets together and there's happy hours and that's fine. But I do feel like, especially after 2020, um, people really woke up to the fact that there was a lot of strategy that goes into what we do. And there's a lot of knowledge that you have in these collectives. And so the people who are helping organize and helping run these organizations can also help with brand strategy. Right now, you know, Blackprint has expanded so much within Meredith Corporation that we have our brands coming to us, you know, when they want, you know, input on programming that they're doing or content that they're putting online or in the pages. And, you know, we're really starting to sit in on those meetings and expand beyond just the events aspect of it. Black culture is everywhere. And sometimes if you, you know, lack that diversity in certain places, we want to be the place within our company as well, where you can tap into that and get authentic um, opinions from people who are living and experiencing this every day. And that only benefits a company, especially when, you know, you're producing great content that Black people can re re uh, resonate with, which is what my goal is, but also you're producing, you know, a company culture where people are happy. And I think that what you said, which I love so much, was that, you know, when your employees are happy, then the business does well, and then your customers are happy. Yes, and we want everybody happy for sure. Terrence, I mean, <laughs> let's talk about that. I mean, you you obviously lead a very important group, Allied. is sounds like a very diverse group, too. Um, uh, you know, as a someone in management and manager role, right? You you definitely mm -hmm. um, have the ears and eyes of those in leadership, and so when when you talk to them and you talk to the, you're really getting a sense of the pulse of the employee base, right? People who are really mm -hmm. having those intimate discussions and maybe feel more comfortable. Since I know Terrence from my ERG, I can talk to him about this, this, and this. Um, what has been your experience about an uh, ERG and the benefits to the company? Sure. Um, I think, you know, and again, not to constantly uh, refer to last year, but it really was such a seismic shift in all, I think, uh, across businesses of how we look at race. Um, and, and again, even for myself, um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, pretty much always being one, if maybe two, if we're lucky, uh, persons of colors in the room, you don't realize how much um, is a, how much, especially in media, how much is being put out there without a gut check. So if you think about it prior to ERGs, let's just say, you know, if you are in an all white, uh, an all white team, and there's editorial about people of color, about LGBTQ, you know, who's, who's checking that information? You know, is it just, you know, what they're Googling and then hoping for the best and setting the tone? Um, I think also for as an employee to know that an ERG exists uh, within your company that you feel like you already have an ear, you already have a voice, whether it's myself or someone from another team that we exist um, and that we are vocal about it. Um, and, you know, I would say, you know, for her, you know, starting at 2019 is fairly late, at least in the game, I think, versus like probably more traditional companies, let's say financial, those type of institutions. But I will say this, you know, we have gone from zero to 60 fairly quickly in terms of the support. And um, and again, it's obviously uh, something that's always developing and continuing for not only how do we, you know, support our BIPOCs and, you know, marginalized employees, um, so that's the internal part, but then obviously there's the external part, the content that uh, we're putting out there uh, to our consumers and, you know, who is checking that and who, how are we continuing it? What I, you know, I think what we all don't want is, you know, that we're trending right now. We trended in 2020 and now 2021, we have a new president um, and we've already seen some things, not with the presidency, but uh, with the activism uh, slowly waning, you know, business leaders who took on a, you know, anti-racist um, face, let's say initially, you know, how are they continuing it? Again, like allyship, it's it's not a one and done. It's not a trend. Um, it's 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 something that has to be actively pursued and worked on uh, both internally and externally. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying it's easy by any means for any of us, um, but it's something that we just have to get to. 
So Terrence, you mentioned, I think you said BIO. I want to make sure we understand the term that you're using. Can you explain mm -hmm. that real quick? So I yeah, don't sure. Know Sorry. BIPOC, which is black, indigenous and people of color. Okay, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Sure. No um, wonderful. Paula, you know, let's talk about the events of 2020. Um, Terrence was just talking about that as well. Obviously, last year was a huge year, um, for better or worse. This definitely is something that is on everyone's radar. Terrence had mentioned also, you know, a lot of companies realize they need to take more of a stronger stance and have a voice and a direction here. Um, how, how are the events in 2020 for you and how did that help uh, evolve your ERG? I think it's really interesting because I have these conversations with my black friends. 2020 was very interesting for a lot of us because it almost felt so random that that was the time and that was the hashtag and that was the name that everyone latched onto and was like, oh, we need to like figure it out. Like things are wrong in America. And for us, it was like, Oh, okay. So this this is the one where okay, okay, everyone's like on board. Like we all want to, you know, get on board now. But it wasn't a new conversation for us. And we've been having these conversations with our executive management, you know. And I think that Meredith, I will say, is very responsive to the things that I suggest. But 2020, for all of my friends in any ERG that I've spoken to, really ex. ex like accelerated everything that they were doing, all the work that they were doing. And then all of a sudden you're in meetings with your CEO and you're really trying to, you know, make the corporate culture better, make the experience better, make sure that your black employees feel like they're being taken care of, especially in that time, because it was very overwhelming. You know, there was a lot of mixed emotions and experiences, but I think the good that came out of that was that, you know, you can't just post the black square, you have to do the, the work that it takes beyond. You have to look at yourself and your company in the mirror and say that there are things that we need to change. And I think that because of 2020, a lot of companies, and I hope that it, it continues. And that's, that's a lot of black people's fear is that it was 2020. Now, you know, things have changed a little bit in 2021, like Terrence referenced. And it's like, okay, well, things are normal now. And it's like, I just want to make sure that people are very aware of the fact that there's still a lot of work to do and it just takes commitment. But I think that 2020 really was the catalyst for a lot of change. And I don't feel like corporate America will go back to what it was before. I think that it's only progressing. And if you aren't progressing with it, then you're going to get left behind. Yeah, Paula, I, I love that you said that. I think um, I, I, it's just my opinion, but I, I'm hoping, just like you, that it wasn't just posting of a black square, making a stance, and then forgetting about it because things are starting to feel, um, if you will, a little bit more normal, like it did four years yeah. prior, right? But mm -hmm. I, I'm hoping that maybe, uh, maybe it, it won't happen overnight, but hopefully this will continue to stay very relevant and very top of mind and that we make a really conscious decision that, there's, there's there's a very strong what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And if mm -hmm. we now know what's right, we should continue to push towards right. Um, Terrence, I, I would love to talk, to, have you share this too. You know, mm -hmm. your ERG, um, what's your group's mission? And what are some of the topics that you've discussed? And on, on Paula's um, uh, comment as well, are, are there things that you're thinking about to making sure that this discussion or the, the challenges that we had in 2020, let's be honest, they were really tough times, right? That this doesn't go to, to vain, that actually something good continues to go forward uh, because of all of us going through 2020 together. Right, no, so, sure. And I, I must say too, on the flip side in terms of COVID, which obviously so much um, has transpired with that, we actually, when I say benefited from COVID, I would say pre not being in the office because we're all working from home now, we would maybe get around 10-ish if we were lucky people in an in-person meeting. Um, once we went online, or once we went from work from home and did virtual meetings, um, actually we've gotten uh, much a much larger response in terms of people actually uh, coming to these meetings. And we, again, we try to keep them as intimate as possible. So we usually cap it at around 30 or so because you know we want everyone to have a voice should they want to say something. But in terms of topics, you know, we, we try not to have a prescriptive, like this is what we're going to talk about. Uh, we'll have some structure and it usually takes the shape of what's happening 
uh, in the in the world or what's happening at the company itself. So our last one, uh, which was uh, this month, our first of the year, um, you can imagine it was all about uh, what transpired at the Capitol on the 6th, um, as well as the election and what people were feeling with that. We've also noticed uh, in terms of getting people at the management level uh, to come and speak and speak their truth and talk about their journey of allyship has been really effective um, because again, you know, at the, let's be honest, the majority at least at our company um, who are of power are straight white men. Um, and, um, you know, everyone again needs to know how to be a good ally. And so it's, it's interesting to see uh, someone at that level uh, who, you know, realistically, if they were in their own world, probably haven't interacted that much with people of color, et cetera, or probably again, have not thought about race. And that's that's the thing I would say I've learned in terms of being a part of these or, this organization um, and just hearing the other um, leaders of the ERGs within our organization um, is the fact that you don't know what you don't know. And if you're not exposed, you, you just, aren't aware of what is transpiring in terms of what you are putting out there and why it, it why it is an issue. Um, you know, as Paula mentioned, you know, like we, we as as a black person, was I surprised about what happened last year, whether it was George Floyd or even what happened um, on the six? Not really. Um, uh, I was more shocked about the brazenness of it, let's just say, versus the actual acts of it. Um, you know as a person of color, you know, you're always aware of uh, that you are other, especially if you are living uh, or working in a world that is predominantly not you. Uh, and for me, it's predominantly white. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of our ERG allied specifically, it really has been a melting pot, pot of different uh, journeys and discussions on how, how to be a better person, how to be a better colleague, um, and especially when it comes to race, because again, you know, I think it's, we've become such a polarized uh, culture, I think of not only cancellation culture, but things are black and white, and there are so many shades of gray uh, that just aren't discussed. And I think our ERG allows that, and it's not, um, you shouldn't be ashamed, you know, Again, you are a product of how you've grown and your society, uh, and we're all at different levels in that respect. Uh, as long as we're all going, I think, towards uh, the right direction of, of being just good people to each other, I think that no matter your color, obviously your creed or your sexuality, I, th I think that's our biggest thing, and, and that's where the true allyship comes in. I love that because I, I do think that's so important, right? We all we all should strive to be better people and improve ourselves and grow that way. And I love how there's a, that intimacy within the ERG that because it's not oftentimes it's not corporate driven, although both of you are high level executives at your company, you are part of the ERG, your leadership within the ERG, but at the heart of it, uh, the ERGs I've had a chance to collaborate with and I actually did was able to collaborate with um, uh, Meredith, uh, Katie Hill yeah. on that one event. There, there's something really special about these, right? Because you're able to have these really organic, natural conversations, which make them very special. And, and sometimes some of you who are watching or joining us might be thinking, well, you know, Terrence is talking about a group of 30. I don't know how big Paula's group is, but can they really make a difference? And I would say, absolutely. It's these intimate conversations where um, we can talk about truth, right? And not feel like we need so many levels of filter that that can continue to educate each other and learn from each other and just be better, just be better humans, like we're improving on our humanness, if you will. Exactly. So, yeah. So I want to segue a little bit if we can. And, and this is, you know, Paula, you know, you've been part of uh, Black Print, you're part of ERG. And, and obviously, you were already a powerhouse before you you led your ERG. What I guess I, I'm curious to see what you learned, um, or has have you been you learned anything from the ERG on the reverse um, that maybe surprised you that you didn't think would mm -hmm. come if, by you know being a part of an ERG. I will say selfishly, I took you know the lead of Black Print for myself because I just didn't want to be the one 
black person in the room anymore. Um, but what I am always surprised by and what I've learned about myself is that I really have, you know, helped create this community of people here. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but sometimes I'll hear like, I'm so frustrated in my job. The only reason I'm staying is because of black print. And the thing, the times that I hear stuff like that, it really makes me feel like, you know, the work and the hours and all the things that we're doing um, for this company are worth it because we are really pushing Meredith to be better and move into a better direction. And I love that I get to hear feedback like that every single day. Yeah. And, I, and, and I'm going to jump to you, Terrence, too, because mm -hmm. I want to hear your perspective on this as well. Yeah. I mean, similar to Paula in terms of I, too, feel like ERGs for me has been a selfish pursuit in the sense of it's really given me the opportunity to reflect on my own biases. Um, you know, again, none of us are monolith because I'm black. I don't have the same experience necessarily as Paula, even though we have a lot of similarities, there are obviously going to be a lot of differences and that's just a human thing. It's not a race thing. Uh, but oftentimes than not, we are just seen as our race or what, you know, what cues people know. He went to this school, thus A, B, and C. She works here, thus A, B, and C. Um, and that's not, that's just not the case. Um, so, you know, for me and, and being a part of the ERG, it, it really has been myself learning more. I came from a predominantly, you know, when I say, obviously my family's black, but, uh, you know, a, a, white a white neighborhood, white schools. And then, you know, in terms of uh, the industries that I've pursued uh, and the uh, type of opportunities, which has mainly been fashion, media, and lifestyle, as well as the marketing PR events world, um, it, it has been again, predominantly white. So, you know, there are certain things that I don't know, it goes back to, I was thinking about it this morning, knowing I was going to speak. I remember in high school, one of the few other black kids in my all boy Catholic school um, asked me who I thought public enemy was. And I said, the devil, I had no idea that it was a music group. Like I just had no mm -hmm. idea. And again, it's it's one of those things that you know what you know and you don't know what you don't know. And I think, you know, we are at a point where, and I'm not talking about I should know who, what's a great rap music versus whatnot, et cetera. That's not what I'm debating. What I'm saying though is there's no longer I didn't know in terms of how we deal with one another, especially when it comes to race. Um, it, it just, you know, I think where before we I would look the other way maybe or you know, not be as vocal, um, you know, it, it's sort of a reckoning now. And that, you know, the more silent, you know, the less progress, it, it just takes us a step back. Uh, so honestly, being in an ERG or leading one and knowing that her uh, supports them. So it really has empowered me. And I think, you know, ultimately benefits me as an employee because I am being more of myself. And I hope that's for all employees who have touched an ERG, that they know there's the support and that outlet, um, and they're coming as their true self, uh, which, you know, obviously, if you're an employer, you want the best of your employees, so they perform the best. Um, and I, I do think that helps. I love that. I love that, Terrence. And I love this, Paula. Thank you so much for being so honest with us today. The conversation is incredible. On, on, selfishly, I wish I will be selfish now. I wish I had more time with both of you, too, to, to delve into this more so. And I think we should continue this conversation because it's important mm -hmm. for us to speak about this. And not only that is like a lot of a lot of our audience today, and I'm sure they're going to be watching us on a replay. A lot of people aren't familiar with ERGs, and, and more importantly, the good work and the eye-opening experiences is these small groups. They're learning and developing uh, different groups and communities and, and sharing voices. We need to put that that sort of content, like Paula and Terrence know, share this content wider and broader so more of us are reminded how important this is. So you know what I'm going to do? We'll have a little bit of fun now, because those of you who watch the show know that we do something fun called the Speed Round. And you know, we got to do that today. So let's have our speed round. Why don't we? Our first question is if you could have anyone living or dead uh, speak at your ERG right now, who would you choose? I already know my answer. Uh, and we'll let Paula go <laughs> first. <laughs> Let's my go. answer will always be Mama Michelle Obama because she is an icon and a, a living legend. 
Um, and I will keep working on that until I'm no longer the chair of black print because I'm <laughs> manifesting it now. It's going to happen. Well, I love that. For those of you who are watching, one of you I know has a connection with the one and only Michelle Obama. I'm not going to name you, but you know who you are. Maybe you can make that happen. All right, Terrence, yes. what's your question? Who do you want to speak at your ERG right now? Well, if there's a connection there, then I'm going to take Barack. <laughs> so, Paul, maybe you and I can talk and we can figure out something we've in done, terms of Meredith actually, Hurst moment. Yeah, we've, we've partnered with Hurst before, so I love yes. to do it again. <laughs> yes, and I think I, obviously just based on all that, all of his firsts, among many other things. Um, but I also just think he's a symbol of, you know, he's at, at least in America, the highest he could go. And yet we're still in the place that we are at, you know, exactly. so when people say, well, we've had a black president and what? Yes, we yeah. have. And we still need to continue. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> well, we had someone else after. So, but anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. but, but yes, absolutely. And I will tell you it uh, as the person who's watching that, you know, you know, see if you can make this happen. And, and while you're at it, you know, invite them to my show too, because I'd love to have them both on my <laughs> Ignore them. Um, but I love this. All right. Second question. This time, Terrence, we're going to start with you on this one. Okay. And that is once the pandemic is over, Terrence, what's the first place that you head to and who are you going to take with you? Oh, wow. So many places uh, to be on a plane again. For, <laughs> does it matter now at this point? No. Uh, in an ideal world, if we're, we're, we're talking ideal, I would probably say my partner and my family, um, my parents and my sister um, and my nephews. And uh, we'd go somewhere in Europe, maybe Provence. It's one of my favorite places. So that's where we're off to. Yeah. Oh, you're going to have to send us pictures of food. Yeah. <laughs> would love to. But what a nice guy. You know, Terrence is going to need a full plane for that trip for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll do you know, private. <laughs> yeah, he'll do private. He'll make sure he send his photos, of course. <laughs> All right, Paula, where are you going? Um, I would definitely go back to Paris. I normally go every year. Um, I have a lot of family in France. And obviously, with the pandemic that's happened, I haven't been back since November 2019. And so I'm like itching to go. I'm itching for the macarons. I'm itching for the fresh bread. But I would definitely go to Paris and I'd bring my best friend, Danielle. Oh, I love it. And you would take the entire Level Up crew too with you because we want to experience this, oh, yeah. the food with you, Paula. I love this. Well, you know, for those of you watching, I would love to hear from you too. Definitely let us know first off where you like to go. And of course, who you would like to see at your ERG if you're part of one. If you're not, this is an opportunity for you to talk to your employer to think about the idea of maybe creating one. I know smaller, mid-sized businesses, maybe it's a little bit more challenging because you don't have enough employees. But at larger companies, look at these two amazing uh, companies and what they're doing and, and the honest conversation that we're having today. So what a treat. I want to say a huge thank you to Paula and Terrence for joining us, being so honest with us and being so generous with so much knowledge. And I, and I love how the two of you are, I guess in some ways, if we didn't know better, we'd say that competing media houses, but look at, they're like, at this point, we're all one happy family. And, and that's a happy family. Yeah. yeah, that's a happy family. And that's the, that's the beauty of it, right? So and the only way to have change is to move forward together and work together. Mm -hmm. So I love that. And, and, and Paula's words are so, so true. Terrence, any last words uh, that you'd like to share with us? No, just, you know, keep on keeping on in terms of everyone's allyship, because again, better together. And there's so much brokenness right now. And I, but I do see a light at the end of the tunnel. And I do feel like we are on the path of healing, which is amazing, considering the past four years we've, we've just witnessed and lived through. So very optimistic. Okay. So true. So true. Perfectly timed, Terrence. Let me ask you this, Paula, real quick. What's the best way people could follow you, learn more about the, the, the projects that you're working on? Is there a place that you prefer? Yes, you can definitely follow me at Keedy, K-E-E-D-Y, Paula, P-A-U-L-A on Instagram and Twitter. And then to keep up with all things Black Print, it's Black Print NYC on Twitter and Black Print Meredith on Instagram. I love it. And we're seeing your fabulous uh, Twitter page right now. <laughs> I love it. And like, look at those outfits. She's so, she is so fabulous. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Look, I love Always those pants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Terrence, what about you? What Where can people follow you? Where do you prefer? Sure. On Instagram and Twitter, I'm at notcharles. 
And then all like. things Hearst, you can go to the Hearst website uh, where it does outline all of the, what we call infinity groups or ERGs, uh, if you want to learn more. I love it. And look at you. We just got to say this. Look at his profile photo. Brilliant. Beautiful. Look at the, <laughs> the black. It's so pretty. So pretty. I love thank that. Uh, huge thank you to my friends, Paula and Terrence, for joining us today. And thank you so much for those of you tuning in. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch replays and strategy videos you have here. As you know, our live stream with streams on six different platforms every day that the financial markets are open. Tomorrow, we have a very special AWA Ask Winnie Anything episode planned for you as we meet others who, like you, have shared their business and personal finance questions to be answered right here on the show. So thank you so much for watching, supporting our program, and sharing the show with those that you love. As a reminder, you can find full episodes of Level Up on NASDAQ, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Be well, and I can't wait to see you again tomorrow. Have a beautiful day.